Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that, of course, that I would review this little video that I found to be very particularly interesting. And this is, <laughs> this is going to be kind of an interesting video because not only is this going to be another conversation on Mr. Canelo Alvarez, and I'm not really quite sure what I'm going to name this video, but this is going to be a video that I'm going to review by the Boxing Channel that I review every once in a while. Mr. John Boxing Pound for Pound the Best. And the reason why I thought that I would review this is, of course, this is his video stating that Canelo is not an all-time great, or at least overall, you know, to the standard that many people are, you know, putting him on. And what I will state is this, is that if Canelo Alvarez is going to be looked at as one of the top five pound for pound fighters in the world today, which in my personal view he is, he is going to have to fight some of the best fighters out there and some of the best top contenders possibly including David Benavidez and that of a David Morrell. Now that being stated, is David Benavidez, in my personal view, really a 168 pounder? No, he's not. <laughs> he's really more of a light heavyweight. That being said, I also think that Canelo is more of a middleweight, but if the man is going to hold the belts there, and if he is going to fight there consistently, he is going to have to fight some of the people that challenge themselves there, and that are some of his mandatories. And if that is going to be David Benavides or David Morrell, he is going to have to fight some of those fighters. It just is what it is. I don't think that it's completely unwarranted or unjust to ask Canelo Alvarez to fight those guys. Now, what would be unjust a little bit in my view is to ask Canelo Alvarez <laughs> to fight certain guys like a Usyk, like once upon a time people were when he was going to move up to Cruiserweight and fight Olunga Makabu at the Cruiserweight division. What would be unjust is to ask Canelo Alvarez, in my view, to fight someone like a Better Beaver or a Demetri Bevo, some fighters that Canelo has no business really facing in the ring because he's way smaller than those guys, uh, you know, or, or possibly some other fights as well. Even a little bit Terrence Bud Crawford, because Crawford really <laughs> has no business being in the ring with, with a Canelo Alvarez, with Terrence Bud Crawford probably being about a natural welterweight and Canelo, at the very least, being a natural middleweight. And on top of that, I'm not really quite sure if that fight, I'm not really quite sure how much of an appeal that fight's really going to have. Because I think people are really starting to take a look at Canelo and that he's clearly aged. But that being stated, Canelo, yes, in my view, he is an all-time great level fighter. But that being stated, where does Canelo Alvarez really go from here? The question is, is who is he really going to fight next? And that probably is going to be the title of this video. Who is Canelo Alvarez really going to fight next? And apparently from what I'm hearing, there's a possibility that Canelo, that he might have a mandatory defense against a Jamal Charlo or a Chris Eubank Jr. or, you know, maybe someone else, say, you know, William Skull, I believe that one Cuban fighter that he could potentially face, you know, in that of December or whenever he might possibly fight. And then, of course, there's always the Terrence Bud Crawford fight that may potentially open itself. Who knows? Canelo said that the fight is not impossible, but I'm not really quite sure, you know, how much, <laughs> how how possible the fight's really going to be. I really have no idea whatsoever. Uh, you know, the fight, honestly, that I would love to see Canelo win next would be the Yannabek fight, but, you know, I don't think that that fight's going to happen for a few reasons. One of those reasons being because I don't think that Canelo Alvarez believes that that fight would sell, and that more than likely that Yannabek would be a little bit too much risk for the possible reward. He's an Eastern European fighter that really is not known outside of boxing whatsoever. I don't think that that fight's going to happen. And number two, I think that Yannabek is way more focused on trying to unify that of the middleweight titles. And I don't see Canelo Alvarez at this age moving down and trying to move, lose even extra weight for that in the middleweight class. Even though, yes, I think he's more of a middleweight fighter. But Canelo, you know, he doesn't feel like losing eight extra pounds overall at this point in time in his career. Feeling like jogging more and, and doing more in order to lose the weight. He doesn't really feel like doing that. So the question is, is where does Canelo Alvarez really go from here? And I do get the warranted criticism for Canelo if he's not going to fight David Morrell or Benavidez if they're going to compete there. Now, the question is about David Benavidez is that is he ever going to compete there again? Because apparently from what we're hearing, David Benavidez might possibly try to get the winner of the Bevo versus Better Beef fight, which would be very interesting. We'll see how that goes. But apparently what we're also hearing from Canelo is that he might very well think about possibly rematching Dimitri Bivol, at least if Dimitri Bivol ends up unifying that of the light heavyweight class, which in my view wouldn't be the worst fight for Canelo Alvarez to take, but that definitely would probably be the last fight in Canelo Alvarez's career. I think that Canelo Alvarez even knows himself that it's pretty much going to be time very, very soon to hang up the gloves. But the question is, is how is Canelo Alvarez going to go out? Who is he potentially going to fight next? We'll see. But anyways, let's get into this video. A lot of you Canelo Alvarez fans has proven that Canelo ain't shit. 
and yet proven that by not holding Canelo Alvarez to a higher standard. Canelo is supposed to be the face of the sport of boxing. He's supposed to be the standard. Fighters that are coming up are supposed to look at Canelo as the standard. But yet Canelo is fighting mediocre opponents. And you guys are not holding him. Well, Edgar Berlanga, in my view, was a relatively mediocre opponent. That being stated, <laughs> once again, uh, when people call Canelo Alvarez quote-unquote one-dimensional or they call him quote-unquote super limited as a fighter... I don't think people realize how skilled you have to be even to beat someone like an Edgar Berlanga, someone who is about what six foot to six foot two. I mean, to be honest with you, he looks like about you know six foot to six foot one. I don't know how tall he is. And on top of that, apparently he rehydrated at about one ninety three to one ninety five on fight night. You know, damn damn near a cruiserweight in that ring. And on top of that, he's relatively powerful and at the very least a B grade level fighter. A lot of people don't understand once again when you're really a natural middleweight fighter how skilled you have to be in order to beat a fighter like that. But that being stated, of course, if Canelo Alvarez once again is going to compete at that weight class, that's not an excuse, once again, to avoid David Benavides or David Morrell. If you're going to compete there, then you have to fight those guys. And if you're going to consider yourself, and if everyone else is going to consider you a top five pound for pound fighter or one of the best fighters in the world, then yes, you are going to have to fight those guys, no matter the age. I'm accountable. He's supposed to be the, the standard of the sport. But yet, you guys are okay with this guy fighting mediocre opponents. If and let me also state this. I don't think that Jaime Munguia nor Jamel Charlo were mediocre opponents. I count those as both A-minus level wins for Canelo Alvarez. Fighter is the number one pound for pound or top five pound for pound. He's supposed to be that standard. He's supposed to be that golden standard. He's supposed to lead by an example. And Canelo Alvarez is not leading by an example because he's not fighting the guys that are knocking at his door. He's fighting fighters that get surprised whenever they get a phone call from him. Those are the fighters that Canelo Alvarez is fighting. Fighters that were never thought that they would get a phone call from Canelo Alvarez. I'm an MJ fan. I'm a Kobe fan. I'm an Allen Iverson fan. I'm also a LeBron James fan. You see, a lot of people, they prove daily that LeBron is the GOAT. And the reason being is because... Well, LeBron James is not the GOAT, uh, but it is what it is. That's another reason actually why I wanted to talk about this video because I also like basketball. LeBron James, is no offense against him, but um, <laughs> I've never seen an athlete that has been so protected by the media literally in all my time of watching sports. And I've seen certain athletes protected. Aaron Rodgers, to a degree, Canelo Alvarez, you know, or, you know, maybe some other guys, you know, but at, <laughs> out of all the, all the, you know, Roger Federer, Rafi Nadal, all those, you know, Serena Williams, definitely. All those athletes were slightly somewhat protected or coddled by that of the media. But LeBron James may have been more protected than all those athletes combined. I mean, seriously, for the past 10 years, especially once he went back to Cleveland, this motherfucker could never do anything wrong. There was never any accountability overall to LeBron James whenever he ended up losing something. Never. There was always some sort of bullshit excuse. A lot of people hold LeBron James to the standard if he was 25 years old. Well, the reason why people keep holding LeBron James to that standard is because people keep trying to act like LeBron James is 25 years old. All we hear from LeBron James fans, you know, whenever we hear that, you know, well, LeBron James might be on the decline, all LeBron James fans respond with is that you're quote-unquote hating and that he's still putting up these great stats and blah, blah, blah. But then when it comes to winning in the playoffs and all of a sudden he can't defeat the Denver Nuggets or someone else like that, then all of a sudden they're like, well, what do you expect from LeBron James? He's 40 years old. Well, well which is it? Are we quote-unquote hating on LeBron James because, you know, overall we're starting to see a little bit of a decline, even though he's putting up great statistics? Or should he be held accountable overall for losing because he still had a great point in his career? Like, you can't have it both ways. LeBron James is 40 years old. But fans are not allowing LeBron to get old because every time the Lakers lose a game... LeBron James fans are not allowing LeBron James to get old. LeBron James fans overall, once again... Uh, you know, LeBron James is an all-time great player, but he's probably the most overrated top 10 player of all time. Or if they don't win a playoff game, LeBron James is held accountable, not the team. It's right. Well, you know what, sir? Uh, you know, when it comes down to it, when you're looked at as the quote unquote greatest of all time, or when you're looked at uh, overall as quote unquote, you know, still debatably in your prime, guess what? You're still going to be held to those standards. Uh, so it is what it is. Um, you know, LeBron James, once again, no offense against him. LeBron is an all-time great player. 
But if he was truly the greatest of all time, then the series in 2011, 2014, and 2017, they would have not ended up the way that they did. Once again, LeBron, LeBron James, um, you know, he always gets these bullshit-ass excuses. At the end of the day, in 2011, you had only Dirk Nowitzki basically on that Dallas Mavericks team, at least for all-star caliber players. You had Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. You lost that within six. You were terrible within that series. Um, you know, then you talk about the 2014 series. People always trying to make bullshit excuses for LeBron James in that series. Dude, the San Antonio Spurs, even though, of course, of course they were the more coherent team, they had greater cohabitation at that time. But at the end of the day, people try to act like that San Antonio Spurs team was like some mega fucking super team. No, they weren't. They only had one all-star that year, which was either Manu Ginobili or Tony Parker. Like, dude, Kawhi Leonard had not made an all-star team yet. He was not an all-star level player yet. Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker were starting to age. They were getting older. Tim Duncan was 37 years old. 37 years old. Didn't even make the all-star team that year. All right? You know, it's so funny that these LeBron James fans, they love to always say that MJ, that he beat the Detroit Pistons where they were quote-unquote old, but they don't ever mention the San Antonio Spurs. 37-year-old Tim Duncan whooped LeBron James's ass in that 2014 NBA Final Series. They lost within five. Like, I'm supposed to believe this shit about how LeBron James is clearly the most impactful and the greatest player ever. Right, you have Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh on your team, you know, against the older Spurs team. Still clearly a great team, but <laughs> you lose some of those games by literally a record margin. Like, literally, go ahead, go ahead and take a look at some of those score differentials. They lost that series, I believe, by a record margin in some of those games. And I'm supposed to believe that LeBron James with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, even though they were aging a little bit, you know, of course, when it came down to they weren't quite the same, but neither were the Spurs. And I'm supposed to believe that LeBron James is the greatest and the most impactful player of all time. Like, get the fuck out of here. And then in 2017, you have Kyrie, you have Kevin Love, you have J.R. Smith. You have all these great players on your team, but two all-star players. Golden State was supposed to win that series. But if LeBron James is, is, is the quote-unquote greatest of all time, especially with two other all-stars, that series is at least supposed to go six. Larry Bird was able to take the Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Lakers always to six games at least, and he was able to beat them once in seven. How come LeBron James can't do that? LeBron's fault. And I know that some LeBron James fans are going to come in here and say, oh, well, he beat the Warriors in 2016. Right, the Warriors in 2016, though, they were not a mega super team. The Warriors only became a mega super team once they added Kevin Durant. All right, so, so you can't really compare that. Every time something goes wrong with the Lakers, it's LeBron's fault, not the team. They are players that... Well, according to the media, nothing is ever LeBron James's fault. The media, <laughs> literally, uh, you know, I think I've seen two total media members always, you know, actually give some sort of responsibility, you know, overall or self-accountability to LeBron James. It might be Skip Bayless, a little bit of Stephen A. Smith, and someone else. That's really about the only two media members ever. Everyone else has always given this motherfucker some sort of excuse. Are younger than LeBron James, Anthony Davis. He's 30 years old, but he's not held to that standard. LeBron is. LeBron is held to that standard because he's the GOAT. Floyd Mayweather at 38, 39 years old was held to the standard if he was 25 years old because he fought Andre Berto. And that was actually a standard that was quote unquote true of more Floyd Mayweather Jr. than what it really is LeBron James. LeBron James always has some sort of excuses made for him. Always. Floyd Mayweather Jr. never had any excuses for him. Floyd Mayer the Jr., there was always something that he could be doing, no matter the age, no matter the weight class, no matter what it was. Floyd always had to try and appease the people overall because they always wanted him to lose. That was something that was very uh, overall true of Mayweather and also a little bit of Canelo, depending, of course, on the demographic and the channels that you're talking about. Le LeBron James has basically had his balls cradled overall once again. Uh, you know, no, no pun intended. You know, he's basically, he <laughs> basically had his, you know, balls massaged overall, you know, by the NBA media now for the past, I don't know how many years, like, please. For his last fight, and then he retired. But boxing fans didn't say Floyd Mayweather Jr. when he fought Andre Berta was on overtime. No. And, uh, you know, this man also brought up Allen Iverson earlier. You know, let me bring up Mr. Allen Iverson. You want to talk about, uh, quote unquote, overrated players. Allen Iverson is probably the most overrated player. He's probably the most overrated NBA player within history. This dude gets talked about like the way that Allen Iverson, there, there's, there's always one per each and every single sport. Like when you take a look at tennis, you know, David Ferrer, for example, you know, David Ferrer is always talked about, you know, that one Spaniard, you know, dude, he always gets talked about like he won multiple Grand Slams. The man never even won one. 
You know, people always talk about David Fair, you know, as if he was this great player. And he was a great player to a degree, but he wasn't he wasn't the guy, you know, that of course was Grand Slam worthy. It just is what it is, at least not enough to win one. You know, it is what it is. You know, Allen Iverson, you know, he's kind of like that for the NBA. People always talk about Allen Iverson as if, you know, he's a potential top 10 to top 20 player of all time. Allen Iverson had one all-time great playoff run. One. That was it. All the other playoff runs, honestly, to be real with you, really weren't that deep. And you know what people never want to mention about Allen Iverson is that without Larry Brown for coach, he really never did that much in the NBA. They said Floyd Mayweather still had work to do. And we're talking at least in terms of playoff success. About a Hall of Famer, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Floyd was already a Hall of Famer before he fought Canelo Alvarez. But right, but if we're also comparing Canelo Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez clearly is a future first battle Hall of Famer. And not only is Canelo Alvarez <laughs> clearly a first ballot future Hall of Famer, Canelo Alvarez is one of the greatest fighters to ever step in a ring. He put in say that Floyd Mayweather... Now, once again, does that mean that Canelo was not warranted of criticism? No, of course not. But at the end of the day, once again, let's please stop with this bullshit about how Canelo was not this quote-unquote all-time great fighter. At the end of the day, you cannot have the wins that he has and the divisions that he's won in and be the size that he is and not be a quote-unquote all-time great fighter. Be undisputed in a weight class. You know, win three out of the four main belts of the middleweight class. Win a light heavyweight title at five foot seven. You know, like like the things that Canelo did really should have never even happened for his size. When he fought Berto was on overtime. No, they still said that Floyd Mayweather Jr. had work to do. So they held him to that standard if he was a 25-year-old fighter. They said, nah, uh you're not. They definitely did, and that shows you Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s greatness. Fighting Berto, you need to fight someone who's a threat to you. You need to be fighting Keith Thurman. Athletes is only held to that standard is when they're great. Well, it's very obvious that Canelo Alvarez is a great fighter, but I do agree overall that once again that his fans or a certain amount of people that they are going to have to hold him even to a higher standard because if you're looked at as debatably the number one pound for pound fighter, which right now in my view he cannot be. Because there's just, in my view, not a win that, in my view, has recently proved him to be the number one pound for pound fighter. And I've had to put Crawford and Usyk ahead of him, you know, overall. Because, once again, they were recently in 50-50 level fights. And they were able to win their matchups. That's why Usyk right now has to be my number one pound for pound fighter. Because that win over Tyson Fury, that was something that was never supposed to happen ever in a million years. But he was able to do it over an A-grade level fighter. You know, but it is what it is. And of course, Canelo was still there within my top five pound for pound, but he has slipped a little bit, not only because, you know, he hasn't really fought a guy that in my view would be within that top 10 to top 20 pound for pound. Well, Jamel Charlo, I guess, but, you know, of course, Jamel, Jamel, you know, he was always debatably not even in my top 10 pound for pound anyway, but, you know, it is what it is. But anyways, you know, that's whatever. But uh, Canelo Alvarez, in my view, he's still got a couple of A grade level wins lately, but... You know, just not quite on the level that, in my view, he needs to in order to be number one pound for pound. But it is what it is. But once again, we'll see where Mr. Canelo Alvarez goes next. But once again, um, it's getting very close for Canelo Alvarez to try and hang him up. Who, who once again, would I like to see Canelo fight? I would love to see him fight Janabek. I just don't think that fight's going to happen. But, you know, we'll see what happens. From what I'm hearing, there's a new Latino kid on the block that Canelo might fight that's relatively talented. We'll see what he ends up doing. It's going to be very particularly interesting. But... I just don't see, <clears throat> excuse me, the David Benavides fight happening unless it's his absolute last fight. And I think that there's a very po good possibility that Canelo Alvarez, that he might go after the unification winner at the light heavyweight division, especially if it's Demetri Bivol. But we'll see. But anyways, that pretty much is about it for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see where this goes.